Hi there. Thanks for tuning into our channel. My name is Wiley Allen and I'm the founder here at Pinnacle Supplementation. Today we are going to be building off last week's video, which was immunity supplements, and discuss another popular supplement category, which has also been said to enhance immune health alongside a lot of other claim benefits, and that is probiotics. Probiotic sales have been growing rapidly, so there are many people that are interested in taking them for one reason or another, but Let's go look at them a little more closely. So here are Amazon's best-selling probiotic supplements. And let's just go right down the line here and start at number one, the best-selling probiotic on Amazon. And ironically enough, they don't even have a supplement fact. So I just went to the company's website to pull up the supplement facts. And here they are here. So they have 60 billion CFU. CFU just means colony forming units. So that is the quantity of microorganisms, 60 billion, in this probiotic supplement here. And they have 10 different strands of probiotics in this product. But what even is a probiotic? Let's look at that first. So a probiotic is defined as a live microorganism that when administered in adequate amounts confers a health benefit on the host, which is you. So yes, these are living microorganisms inside your body. And most of them reside specifically in your gut. And then the names of them can get pretty confusing. So a probiotic is identified by its specific strain, which includes its genus, its species, and maybe it's subspecies as well, okay? So as an example here, we have Bifidobacterium, the genus, then the species is Longum, and then the subspecies is also Longum, all right? And then its specific strain is called 35624, which could also be called Bifantis commercially, okay? So we can go look at that product and we can see here is a bifidobacterium, which is abbreviated by the B, and then longum, the actual species name again, and its specific strain used in this product is BL05. So it's a slightly different strain than what is used in this example over here. Why does that matter? Well, because effects of probiotics can be specific to certain probiotic species and strains. So their recommendations from human research studies need to be both species and strain specific. So this example here, this B. longum 35624 strain could have completely different effects in the body than this example over here, this B. longum BL05 strain. So if you take a look at a probiotic human study like this one. So it's looking at the immunity in the elderly by supplementing the probiotic by Phytobacterium lactis HN019. If this shows beneficial effects for immunity, it can only be said for this specific strain of B. lactis, the HN019. So if this product over here, which also has B. lactis, and it is BL04 as the specific strain, it can't use this study over here if it shows positive effects because it is a completely different strain. Only if it has HN019 does it actually show anything at all. The BL04 strain over here would not have the exact same positive effects, okay? So it's vital that when you're looking for a probiotic supplement, that you choose one that actually has specific strains that have been shown to have the positive effects that you are looking for. Okay, so we can take a look at this study specifically because it does show something meaningful in it, all right? So the study was, first the subjects consumed a drink that did not have any probiotics in it as a control, and then the actual intervention was they consumed either a drink that had five times 10 to the 10th power organisms, which is 50 billion, okay? Or a lower dose that had five billion organisms for three weeks. And the results were positive. 
all right? So they increased both the T lymphocytes and T cells that they were looking for. So it could possibly have a beneficial effect on immunity, which is good. But here's the big sentence. In general, the two doses of B. lactis HN019 had similar effectiveness. Okay, so the 5 billion organisms was just as effective as the 50 billion organisms, okay? Why does that matter? Because it goes against the more common thinking that people are starting to have in terms of probiotics that they think more is better. So that's why you're starting to see products that have 60 billion CFU, 100 billion CFU, 900 billion CFU, okay? More is not better when it comes to probiotics necessarily, okay? Because a higher dosage of probiotics could actually cause side effects, okay? They could cause some gastrointestinal symptoms. They can make you really gassy. And there's even been cases where high doses of probiotics in people that were ill or had compromised immune systems actually led to infections and severe illness. So the goal when looking for a probiotic supplement is not to find the one that has the highest number of CFUs in it. It's to find the one that has specific strains that have shown positive effects for the things that you're looking for. Now, what are some other things to look for in probiotic supplements? Well, one is to look for how are they actually guaranteeing the quantity of probiotics in the product, okay? So going back to this original number one selling product on Amazon here, they say that they contain 60 billion CFUs at the time of manufacturing, okay? And that is not what you want to see. Why? Because you want to see how many CFUs for each strain are guaranteed by the expiration date or by the use by date on the product. And it is suggested that consumers of probiotic supplements avoid products that list the number of CFUs at the time of manufacture because this information does not account for the declines in CFUs over a product's lifespan. Again, probiotics are living microorganisms and they die over time. So if a product is only listing how many are actually in the product at the time of manufacture, then you don't know how many are actually in there when you actually take the product because who knows how long it's been since that product has actually been manufactured. Now, what is another thing to look for in probiotics? You want to see how they are solving the problem of the stomach acid, okay? So this product, this number one selling product on Amazon actually does a good job in having a specific capsule that is acid resistant and is delayed release so that way the probiotic organisms can reach the intestines effectively. Why is this a big deal? Well, because a lot of probiotic strains have a difficult time surviving the stomach acid, okay? And this was shown in a study back in 2014 where eight different probiotic products were tested and they found that only one of the products actually survived the gut acidity and then flourished into the intestines. Okay, so this problem can be solved in one of two ways. One, they can actually put the product in a enteric coating or timed release technology. That way the probiotics can bypass the stomach acid and get into the actual intestines where they have their beneficial effects. The other option is to actually use strains that have been shown to bypass the stomach acid with no problem because not all strains have a problem with the body's stomach acid, okay? So this product specifically known as Ganadin BC30 or Bacillus Coagulans GBI30-6086 does bypass the stomach acid because it has an extra layer to it that serves as a protective shield through the stomach acids and the intestinal bile. So it is able to survive the hostile environment of the stomach and colonize in the intestines. 
So this strain specifically does not need any kind of enteric coating or timed release technology. But if a probiotic does not either have the ability to get past the stomach acid on its own or is not in an enteric coating or timed release technology, then it is just going to end up dying in the stomach acid and is not going to have any beneficial effects for you. Okay, so that is a very important thing to keep in mind. Now, let's go take a look at the number two best-selling probiotic on Amazon. So this product here has 50 billion CFUs in it from 16 different probiotic strains. And when we look at the label specifically, we're gonna notice a few problems. So the biggest problem is that it doesn't list any of the specific strains that are in this product. It only lists the genus and the species. So like Lactobacillus acidophilus, but it doesn't have any strain name after that. So it'd be extremely difficult to know if any of these probiotics can actually have any beneficial effects that have been supported by human clinical studies because we need the specific strain. And the second problem is that since it says at the top there, capsules can be opened and contents can be taken directly, that means it's not in any kind of fancy pill or tablet that is going to allow these probiotics to survive the stomach acid. So a lot of these probiotics are not going to make it past the stomach acid and are just going to die. So you're not actually going to be getting that full 50 billion CFU there. Now the one good thing that it does, which unfortunately we can't see in this picture, so I had to go look it up on the other website it's on here, same product here, it says here that the 50 billion CFU is guaranteed at the expiration date as long as you keep it at the recommended storage conditions. That's how it should be stated, unlike the other product which said the amount at the time of manufacturing. But again, you won't actually be getting the full 50 billion CFU there because a lot of these are going to die in the stomach acid, unfortunately. Now, I wanna take a look at the bottom of these probiotic labels here because they both said the almost exact same thing. They have a prebiotic fiber blend here. So in this product specifically, it has 377 milligrams of its prebiotic fiber blend. And then going back to the first product that we were looking at, it also has a prebiotic blend at 150 milligrams. Prebiotic, probiotic, almost the exact same word. So what is the difference in that one little letter there? Well, prebiotics are actually a type of fiber that the body cannot digest. And prebiotics are the food for probiotics. So probiotics are the actual living organisms inside your body, while prebiotics are the food that allow the probiotics to keep on living. And prebiotics can be found in a lot of fiber rich foods like fruits, vegetables, grains, but they can also be supplemented. So in both products here, there's one common prebiotic. So we see organic acacia. And then in this product, there is also organic acacia. And it's also sometimes called gum arabic. Okay, so let's go take a look at a study that was done on gum arabic or acacia. So it was looking at its prebiotic functionality. In this study, they consumed either 5, 10, 20, or 40 grams of gum arabic or acacia. And then some people consumed either nothing or they consumed 10 grams of inulin instead, which is a different kind of prebiotic. And the results were that compared to consuming nothing, the gum arabic increased the numbers of bifidobacteria and lactobacilli with the optimal dose being 10 grams. So this is what we're looking for because a prebiotic is providing food for the probiotics, the bifidobacteria and the lactobacilli. So it should increase the numbers of them. And then also this dose, 10 grams, increased the numbers of the probiotics more so than the inulin did. So it also proved to be the more effective prebiotic overall. But again, 10 grams, not 
a couple hundred milligrams like these products contain, okay? It needs to be a good dosage of prebiotics to really help increase the quantities of probiotics in your body. Okay, so let's go take a look at some other prebiotic supplements. So here is Amazon's best-selling prebiotic supplements. And unfortunately, number one and number two are actually probiotics. It says it right there on the labels. So we have to look at number three to actually look at a prebiotic supplement. So this product here has inulin as its prebiotic, a little bit higher dosage, 2.5 grams. But that's still a pretty low dosage and isn't the most effective prebiotic. So let's go take a look at another one. And let's check out number four here. And again, this product has a little bit higher dosage, five grams of a different kind of prebiotic, fructoligosaccharides, or shortened as FOS. And this kind of prebiotic and the inulin are the two most common prebiotics that are found on the market, but they're not the most effective prebiotics because they're both FODMAPs. And FODMAPs are a group of dietary sugars that are poorly absorbed in the small intestine. So consuming a lot of FODMAPs like inulin or FOS can potentially cause more problems than actually solve problems for people with digestion issues. So like people that have irritable bowel syndrome or IBS, both inulin and FOS are going to potentially cause their symptoms to be worse. But that doesn't mean that anyone should shy away from prebiotics. There are better options out there. There's acacia, there's guar gum. There are plenty of prebiotic options out there. And the big thing is that prebiotics provide fiber, which almost everyone could use more of in this country, which was shown by a position stand from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, which stated that only 5% of the American population was getting enough dietary fiber to meet the adequate intake, which is 25 grams for women and 38 grams for men. So combining prebiotics with a probiotic supplement is a great idea because it, one, increases the amount of fiber that people consume, which almost everyone could benefit from, and it is the food that probiotics need. So it makes sense to take a probiotic supplement with its food. So the next time you're looking into a probiotic supplement, keep these things in mind. Does it provide specific strands that have shown human clinical evidence for supporting the issue you are trying to solve? Does it only put strands that have demonstrated the pass through your stomach acid in capsules or powders and put the rest that can't pass your stomach acid into a timed release or enterically coated formula? And then think about if you're providing those good bacteria with the food it needs with plenty of prebiotics, with plenty of fiber. And if you think you are not, then what is the best prebiotic and probiotic option for you? Now, I understand these may not be the easiest things to figure out, but that's why we will do it for you here at Pinnacle Supplementation and make it as easy as possible for you with our products. So thank you again for tuning in. I hope you took a lot of good stuff away from this. And just remember to go reach your pinnacle.